Good day viewers, it's another time of Bible study and we trust that today the Lord will bring his mind to us. It's going to be exciting learning at the feet of Jesus. Remember last week we considered Eli and Aaron as some examples of ungodly leadership. Today we're also going to be discussing two characters, Saul and Rehoboam. And with me in the studio are our fathers in the Lord. By my right is Venerable Dr. Gashinem Paul Dajo. He is the General Secretary, Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. You're welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you, viewers. And then by my left is Venerable Dr. Prince Wu Iroba, Director, Hebrew International Ecumenical Center, Abarato. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, Moderator. Yeah. In our tradition, we will look at the text, but before then, Quickly, let's look at the aims of our study today. One is to identify what made the two kings ungodly leaders. That's Rehoboam and Saul. Two, to discover the consequences of their ungodliness. And then finally, to learn God's stand against ungodliness from the consequences the two kings suffered. Now, let's look at our background text. Sir, you will help us with 1 Samuel chapter 13. 6 to 14 and then general secretary first kings 14 21 to 29 after which we will begin the discussion together first samuel chapter 13 6 to 14 when the men of israel saw that they were in danger for the people were distressed then the people hid in caves in thickets in rocks in holes and in pits and some of the Hebrews crossed over the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was still in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. Then he waited seven days, according to the time said by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. So Saul said, Bring a burnt offering and peace offerings here and here to me and he offered the burnt offering now it happened as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering that Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might greet him and Samuel said what have you done Saul said when I saw that the people were scattered from me and that you did not come within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered together at Michmash. Then I said, The Philistines will now come down on me at Gilgal, and have not made supplication to the Lord. Therefore I felt compelled and offered a bond offering. And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now, your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people. Because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. This, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to God. God. Sir, First Kings 14. First Kings 14, verse 21. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 41 years old when he became the king. He reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Naama, an Ammonites. Now Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, which they committed, more than all that their fathers had done. For they also built for themselves high places, sacred pillars, and wooden images on every high hill and under every green tree. And there were also perverted persons in the land, they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. It happened in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, 
king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. And he took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took away everything. He also took away all the gold shields which Solomon had made. Then King Rehoboam made bronze shields in their place and committed them to the hands of the captains of the guard who guarded the doorway of the king's house. And whenever the king entered the house of the Lord, the guards carried them, then brought them back into the guard room. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. The Bible makes it clear that it is abominable and improper for kings to be wicked. I think let's look quickly at Proverbs chapter 16, 12 and read that scripture. Proverbs 16, 12. It says, chapter 16, verse 12 says, It is an abomination for kings to commit wickedness, for a throne is established by righteousness. I remember also 2 Samuel 23, verse 3, saying that he who rules over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And then we also have Job chapter 34, 17 to 19. And that it is unacceptable for a king in Israel to disobey God's command. Saul, the first king of Israel, had several admirable qualities that made him fit to be king of Israel. But he lost the throne to David because of disobedience. Likewise, Rehoboam, the son and successor to Solomon, became the last king of united Israel as a result of his personal flaws. The two kings did enough to provoke God, to provoke God's wrath and their detriment. I think for me, the takeaway here that keeps on re-echoing each time I look at these characters is the fact that getting to the throne is not an end in itself. Uh, you need godliness, you need character to stay there. And it's a lesson for some of us who are in leadership today. No matter where you're operating from, your talents may take you up. You will need character to stay up. And then we'll look at these two characters to learn some of the flaws in as much as God gave them the truth. But some of those flaws brought them down. I pray that God will help us as we continue in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sir, let me begin with you, sir. Point out the particular wrong actions of the two kings. We will not be reading 1 Samuel 13 and then 1 Kings 14 because those are background texts. We just finished reading them. But General Secretary, sir, you help us with 2 Chronicles 12, verse 1 and verse 14. And then, Venerable Doctor will respond. Okay, 2 Chronicles 12, verse 1 says, Now it came to pass, when Rehoboam had established the kingdom and had strengthened himself, that he forsook the law of the Lord mm. and all Israel along with him. And verse 14. 14 says, And he did evil because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. Mm. Sir, can we point out some of the wrong actions of these two kings and why were those actions considered ungodly? Well, let me start from the last one, last thread, and that is... Um, um, Rehoboam. Rehoboam. He said that he forsook God. He turned away from God mm -hmm. and um, now pursued evil. So evil now started draining. And besides, he allowed people to be doing uh, whatever they like, to be doing evil. Mm. You know, before the king, they say uh, there was no king and people were doing as it pleased them. Mm. Now that there is king, we are people should be led to God. The king, not only that the king failed to follow the will of God, he also allowed people, it mm. became the norm permissiveness mm. uh, so that you know every person were every person was now free to do whatever whatever uh, uh, to turn against god no person so the essence of the king was no longer there so mm. it was a failure then for the soul he might not have turned away like um uh, Rehu Buam, but the man his major problem was that uh, he focused on people mm. instead of 
on God himself. Mm. You know, God is actually the king. Mm. Uh, uh, I remember this uh, uh, Trump, he said that... Uh, um, no matter who is president. Uh, yes, God Jesus, is the king. Jesus is the king. Jesus is the king. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, they are a and in fact, every king, God is said the king mm. everywhere. Mm. Uh, but uh, uh, in, in case of Saul, it was not like that. He didn't look up to God. You will understand it better when you compare his leadership with um, Moses. Mm. Moses was meek. Yes, you relate with people. Mm. Uh, but you always look unto God. God yes. Even when people were pushing him to go back, he continued. Uh, so yet he served the people. Mm. Uh, so, um, um, but this man, he was always looking at people, people. and there were always pressure. Mm. And he always, because of those pressure, he would always disobey God. So uh, he was not focused on God. Mm. Now, because people we are looking at him, he became afraid uh, what he should not do to sacrifice. Yeah. He sacrificed, mm. and he kept recording the man's life. So uh, that's um, that is his major mm. problem, mm. Uh, and uh, God wants us to trust him. And he's actually the leader. And if we are king, you don't follow God, you are failed. Mm. Uh -huh. so. so we can actually say that because he never looked up to God, that action in itself was ungodly. Very ungodly. Very important. Uh, Sir. Can I add something to that? Uh, yeah. you, you see, King Saul was chosen by God. So his first point of call every moment is to look on to God. God mm. Yes. But he was not looking at God. He was mm. looking at the people. Mm. And I think that leaders must learn from, from this his error. Because when, when you are on the throne, it is God who places you on that throne. Mm. And so he is the one who calls you for that assignment and has the mandate for you. If you don't see him and you don't ask him to give you a mandate, you, you will be misfiring. Because hmm. that will not be his purpose. But also I want to charge uh, Saul with an offense of usurping the office of the priest. Exactly. Regardless of whatever happens, mm. at least the office of a priest is different from it's the sacred. office of the king. Yeah, so yeah. he should have stayed in his own office, regardless of what, and wait for the priest. Mm. Awesome. Uh, concerning uh, Rehoboam, Rehoboam. Uh, the, the young man was, was I, I would want to say, maybe a youthful exuberance, I don't know. Mm. But you see, he tolerated evil like the Venerable mentioned, but he also participated in the evil. Exactly. All kinds of abominations going mm. on, adultery, and all of this. So, so <laughs> I he think was that's also the sense of the kingship <laughs> was lost. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, he, he will, not, will know that he was just watching them do it. He was also a participant with them, and mm. that that is very but bad for. I would like to also know yeah. your perspective because that Second Chronicles twelve yeah. verse fourteen I actually said when the Lord had fully established him, yes. that was when he turned. Yes. And the tragedy of history, even in our time, is that men do not learn from history. Exactly. Sometimes people are praying, God, take me there. When God now takes them there, it is now during that time that they now turn, turn their back on yeah. God. We've seen people who are jostling for one political position, coming for prayer meeting. Church, help me pray. I'm going into contest for this. It's ironical that when they eventually win, you no longer see them again. I don't know what. Of course, we have we have testimonies like that. I remember during DIFCON, one of the bishops mentioned his experience with uh, one of the political politicians in his own parish. This man had always come to the uh, bishop to pray for him and to to seek the face of God because he was contesting. Mm. The day he was sworn Declared. in as the the, <laughs> the officer of uh, that uh, of particular office. office. Yes. He never picked the call of the bishop again. He wouldn't, he wouldn't even call the bishop. He wouldn't even visit. He, he doesn't attend church again. So, mm. so that, is, that is exactly what's happening, even in our current dispensation. Current dispensation. Yeah. It's in our life, generally. So it's a matter of spirituality. Mm. Your spiritual relationship with God. How, why are you coming to God? Is it to get something? You know, these days, people go to God for what they will get. Grab out of God. And if that is a purpose, once you get the thing, there is tendency that, uh, we will not see except you. when you have the fear of returning it, mm. to do anything to return it. But it's good to serve the Lord because he's the Lord. Awesome. Yes. But awesome. I also, sorry, just, uh, just a quick one, so that our people, also politicians, will know that whenever a man of God is calling you, it's not always for what you can give him. Mm. Sometimes he may have a message from the for Lord for you. you. Mm. And so you do not need to just shut them off and... 
stay off. Stay off, thinking that they've come again. Yeah. It's all about money. It's not all about money. And it's not just a politician, but my uh, my attention, that caught my attention. The Bible said when the Lord had established him, he forsook the Lord. Not just for politicians. Some of us young men, we are believing God for a knife job. We yeah. are believing God for a marriage partner. As soon as we get that, some of us may no longer be in Bible study. We no yes, longer be in yes, midweek service. Yes. Or you are trusting God for that big business opportunity, that contract. What do you do after God has answered your prayer? Let's look at question two. What other ungodly actions were carried out by them? Mm -hmm. you, you, or 1B. 1B, rather. You help us address. So you get, read First Samuel 15, verse 1 to 3, and then jump to 13 to 19. As well as First uh, Samuel 28, 8 to 12. You read all those. Why? Venerable Dr. Sir. First Kings chapter 12, verse 6. And then verse 15 to 16, 18 and 21 also. We read all those and then the gen will respond. Okay, First Samuel 15, 1 to 3. Samuel also said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore, heed the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have, and do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Verses uh, 13, 13 to 19, 19 now says, Then Samuel went to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. But Samuel said, What then is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears? and the lowing of the oxen, which I hear. And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen, to sacrifice to the Lord your God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said to Saul, Be quiet, and I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And he said to him, Speak on. So Samuel said, When you were little in your own eyes, hmm. were you not head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Hmm. Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why hmm. did you soap down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? Thank you very much, sir. Very well, sir. You help us with the other passages. And that's um, First Kings. 12, 12 6, 6, and then 15 to 16, and then 18 and 21. Um, then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who stood before his father Solomon while he still lived. And he said, How do you advise me to answer these people? Verse 15. 15. So the king did not listen to the people. Hmm. For the turn of events was from the Lord, that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord had spoken by Ahijah, the Shilonites, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Now when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered the king, saying, What share have we in David? Mm. We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. Jesse. To your tents, O mm -hmm. Israel, now see to your own house, O David. So Israel departed to their tents. Hmm. Tragic. Yes. Just say, sir. Yeah. What other ungodly action did these two kings carry out that showed them as ungodly kings? Yeah. One of one of those uh, that uh, Rehoboam performed was neglecting godly counsel. No leader knows it all. Exactly. There is need for you to uh, seek counsel from godly men and women. But his challenge was that the, the, the counsel he got from the elders, he rejected. And he took the ill advice. So one of those uh, uh, negative things about his leadership was that he uh, went with ill advice mm. of his peers. Mm. But uh, concerning uh, Saul, the king, uh, we had earlier said that uh, he rejected... Uh, the, the voice of God and mm. was listening to men. Mm. But I saw in Saul also uh, the spirit of lying. Because he said they've, uh, they've done what God asked them to do. To do. But the statement of God was 
clear everything, destroy everything, don't spare any. So there was lie there, and there was disobedience because it was God who asked him to go and do that, mm. uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that annihilation of the Amalekites. It was God, mm. but there was disobedience. And then there was that spirit of evil in him. If you read uh, chapter 18, verse 6 to 11, that is part of our passage there, you will see also there was jealousy. When, people, when women were celebrating uh, David, David, Saul was, was jealous of David, mm. and then he carried malice against him and, and all of those things. Eventually, there was even murder, case mm. of murder. Mm. So I think that uh, such are some mm. of the ungodly things that our leaders do. This issue about life. I think it just hit me when a uh, venerable doctor said that, you know, a throne, every throne is established by truth. It can't last long when it's built around lies. And as a king, as a leader, you are not supposed to build your throne around lies. Because we see so much in our country today, we see people that should defend the cause of truth. Maybe for political exigency or for some other consideration, you see them becoming pedestrian. Not really coming out yes. to say this is our stand. I, I think, uh, doctor, sir. Uh, uh, they don't even see it as lie. <laughs> they see it as uh, politics. They call it diplomacy. Uh, uh, diplomacy. <laughs> there are ways people want to explain things, uh, um, legitimize whatever. So far, you want to do this thing. Mm. Uh, so when we want to do it, you now explain it, rationalize it. Give but is it actually the world of politics? People say, uh, uh, but that, uh, that that is, is politics but it has been there. You can see it. It has been there from the beginning. This man, he just wanted, he look at the king. Let me save this one. He look at this other, <laughs> that we like this one. Then he now tried, how do I explain this thing? Mm. So he now came to explain them and rationalize it. So it's part of the thing, in, even in the world, when mm. people, the type of lives they want to live, mm. Uh, they no longer ask what actually did God say. Mm. They now want to say, yes, this thing may suit us or this thing may be fine. Or le let's explain it like this way. Uh, when you keep explaining, mm. uh, so you, you, uh, uh, you lose what God has said. But you see, uh, Samuel was firm. He said you have failed. Mm. God says something and you didn't do what God. So it's either what God has said or not what God has said. In fact, somebody yes. say partial obedience is no yes. obedience yeah, at exactly, all. Exactly. That was exactly. what he did. And, and usually people will use other passages now to, to back to up justify, their errors. Yes, <laughs> that is the thing, to justify, <laughs> illegalize. Being somebody that works uh, so much with young people in churches and in other forums, there's a challenge that is coming up and I want to throw it. Maybe you're a young man watching. That every person out there is doing it doesn't make it right. People say, ah, how can I be pure? How can I be pure? Every other person out there is messing up. It doesn't make it right. Don't justify that life. God has called you unto holiness. God has called you unto chastity. We'll continue. What were the consequences of those actions? Venerable Dr. Sir, yes. we'll read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 31, 1 to 5. And then 2 Samuel chapter 21, 1 to 2. Jensek, 2 Chronicles 2, 1 to 2, verse 5, and then 9 to 10. And then you respond. 1 Samuel 31, 1 to 5. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines, and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. Then the Philistines followed hard after Saul and his sons. And Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab, mm. and Machiswa, Saul's sons. The battle became fierce against Saul. The Achaeans hit him, and he was severely wounded by the Achaeans. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, mm. lest these uncircumcised men come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell on it. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died, and died with him. See, hmm. loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> and then Second Samuel 21, verse 1 to 2, sir. Second Samuel 21, 1 and 2. Now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year. 
And David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is because of Saul and his bloodthirsty house, because he killed the Gibeonites. So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnants of Amorites. The children of Israel had sworn protection to them, but Saul had sought to kill them in his zeal for the children of Israel and Judah. Thank you very much, sir. John said, 2 Chronicles 12, 1 to 2, verse 5, and then 9 to 10. Okay, read. Now it came to pass when Rehoboam had established the kingdom and had strengthened himself, that he forsook the law of the Lord and all Israel along with him. And it happened in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem because they had transgressed against the Lord. Verse 5. Then Shemaiah the prophet came to Rehoboam and the leaders of Judah who were gathered together in Jerusalem because of Shishak and said to them, Thus says the Lord, You have forsaken me and therefore I also have left you in the hand of Shishak. Verse 9. So Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took everything. He also carried away the gold shields which Solomon had made. Then King Rehoboam made bronze shields in their place and committed them to the hands of the captains of the guard who guarded the doorway of the king's house. Thank you very much, sir. So what were the consequences of those actions that both kings took, Saul and Rehoboam? Well, uh, um, I think they rejected God and God also rejected them. Hmm. Uh, God said, that far be it from me, but not honor those who honor, honor me. me. So when he calls us and we are with him, then he continues with us. But if we are far from God, uh, if there is a distance, we are the people that have actually moved. Hmm. So Saul himself lost the throne, not just the throne, even his own life. Hmm. He met destruction, he met his family, and uh, the throne he was trying to keep was got lost. Mm. Uh, so God rejected him and replaced him. Even there was famine. The actions of the king can bring disaster, it can bring problem. So there was famine in Israel because of what Saul did and God was angry mm. because of the Gibeonites he, um, he went to kill. And uh, apart from uh, 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 that, then the domination, the Shishak, mm. another king now, God gave him access because we lose our protection when we go against God. Mm. So God who has been protecting them, the King David, the, the, the time of um, Solomon, the Solomon had peace. Now this Rehoboam now, he lost it. Another king now entered the house of God mm. and uh, committed sacrilege, hmm. remove everything there. And uh, this man even went to just replace it anyhow. Hmm. So that uh, domination is as a result of not being with the God. Lord. Yes. So, and Bible says that he that breaks the hedge, the serpent will bite. Yeah. When well, yes. you're not godly, you open up yourself exactly. for several attacks yeah. and yes. the enemy will have its yeah. way over you. The arrows that fly by then, the one that fly by yeah. will be hitting you. I think somebody out there, God is speaking to you. Venerable Dr. Sir, you want to... Yeah, I was going to say what he just said now, that uh, because they rejected God, uh, Jerusalem was plundered mm. by the king of Egypt, Shishak. Mm. So whatever they had gathered all along, whatever Solomon had gathered and, and place, put in place for, for his son to enjoy his reign, they, it was all taken away. Mm. So it's a shameful thing that uh, such a thing, your heritage, you, can, you cannot pass it to your, the next generation. Mm. I mirror the lives of some men, even in our present day time that have acquired so much. But just one act of ungodliness, yeah. the whole thing, another man away. takes yeah. it yeah. over. That's quite tragic, very, very tragic. Every action has a corresponding, uh, do I say reaction now? We learned in, is in Newton's third law of motion that action and reactions are equal and opposite. Yeah. So the, the things you are doing now has consequences. Be careful, child of God, so that you don't go the way of these two kings. We trust that the Lord indeed is blessing you out there. We'll be back in a moment to continue the discussion. God bless you. Hello there. 
Have you ever wondered why Jesus spoke in parables? What do you make of the word parable? Do you find it hard interpreting parables on your own? Don't worry, we have answers to those questions on parables. Parables is a program that brings to bear what parable means and how it affects our day-to-day -day lifestyles, the church, the individual and the society at large. Join me, Uzubechi Frank, as we explore the significance and the inner meaning of each parable of Jesus Christ. Coming to you every Saturday, 1 to 1.30 p.m. with repeat broadcast on Sundays, 7 a.m., Tuesdays, 3.30 p.m. and Thursdays, 7 a.m. From the Anglican Cable Network, Nigeria, ACNN. God bless you. Welcome back. Remember, we've been looking at the lives of Saul and Rehoboam as two ungodly kings in their time in Israel. And I've been in the studio with the General Secretary Church of Nigeria, Venerable Dr. Gashinem Paul. Welcome once again to the program. Thank sir. you, sir. And then, by my left, a very regular face on this program, Venerable Dr. Prince Willie Robert. Thank you, sir. Thank it's you, always sir. a joy to have you. Thank you. Sir. Now, we look at the last question. That's question three. And I think this will come close to, closer to us now, more practical. In the light of the above, General Secretary, sir, what lesson is there for today's leaders? especially in the church. I know you work so much in the church administration setup, so I want to believe, even Venerable Doctor too, so I want to believe that this will be so enlightening for us all. Job chapter 34, verse 19, and then chapter 24, verse 1. You read quickly and then respond. Okay. Job 34, 19. Yet he is not partial to princes, nor does he regard the rich more than the poor. For they are all the work of his hands. Hmm. 24 verse 1 says, Since times are not hidden from the Almighty, why do those who know him see not his days? Hmm. So in the light of the above, what lessons are there for today's leaders, especially in the church? Maybe within our communion first and then to the yeah. Church of God Universal. Yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, well, when we talk about our communion, we are talking about also the Church of God Universal. So yeah. let me let me attack it this way: that mm -hmm. from what uh, Job chapter thirty-four verse nineteen says, I see that leaders must not be impartial. The the idea of favoring one against the other mm -hmm. unjustly is is uncalled for, mm -hmm. is ungodly. So our leaders, whether it be in a church group or in the larger group or even in a church like the Church of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Partiality should not be it. They awesome. should be uh, awesome. impartial. They should uh, ensure that people get what is due to them as appropriately designed by God for them. And as at when do. As at when do also, yeah. The thank you. <laughs> Several servants. Okay, and then also <laughs> the issue of equity and fairness. Mm. Uh, if it is good for that person, give it to him. Mm. Regardless of whether you like his face or you don't like it, because he is also uh, a child of God like you are. Mm. So in our churches, we should... Uh, ensure that there is uh, no partiality, mm. but there is also equity and fairness. Mm. The other part that I read uh, from Job 24 verse 1, uh, for me, is that we must recognize that God is in control. Mm. So that we are given opportunity of leadership does not make us in total control of everything. We are, we are under the control of the Most High. So we must, we must act accordingly yeah variable yeah. said even if when you are the king that god is actually the king exactly uh, when he was there i remember his yes, first yes. So, yeah. so that's the point mm. we must always know that there is someone who is above us who rules and sustains who is sovereign yeah. the almighty god uh, yeah, so let me continue from there uh, because that king is actually uh, if you don't perform your duty as a king he himself will perform his own. On you, on you. <laughs> the king of kings. <laughs> king. So he knows how to deal with people. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the Gen Sex say that um, the king's being Pasha. Likewise, not, the king should not be Pasha. But God himself is not Pasha. Mm. So whether you are a king or you are not a king, whether he will not say, uh, because I'm now a, this person is a king, mm. let him do anything, yeah. let me turn away my eyes yeah. and not do anything to know. He said, God himself will judge you. He will deal with you as he will also deal with uh, mm. 
ordinary, ordinary person. Mm. So it's a lesson. These men, they are kings. They are important people. But God didn't spare them. He didn't spare them. See how Saul died. Ended up. In fact, he committed suicide. Mm, yes. He said it's suicide. At that point, he said, uh, I can't continue. Mm. And they will soon kill me. He would allow, he would have allowed them to kill him. But <laughs> and <laughs> and the, 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 yeah, the mind uh, of God that be initial was to even establish his throne forever. Yes, uh, they, yes. He said here. Yeah, yeah, but yes. he said, but, but now. But now, look at so, yeah. uh, so there are consequences of our action. It's not just about coming to the throne that is the issue mm. but also staying staying okay. at the throne mm. and the way to stay at the throne is to keep align yourself with god who is really who is really the king is the one other thing is mentioned that Saul did wrongly was that he was very desperate he saw david as a enemy Tre as a threat as mm. a threat i wanted to kill him so Today, many politicians are very desperate. Mm. Uh, it's not wrong to seek to position and office, mm. but you don't want to need to get to by all means. means. Mm. And even if you get there, you don't have to stay there by all means. means. Some mm. people in government now they will want to be there by all means. Mm. So, when you are, uh, if you want to be there, do the right thing, mm. obey God. It's God who. Uh, gives who, power. Who gives power mm. and God will, will return you there. They, when they, these people failed, God rejected them. So there's possibility of God rejecting people who fail. No person is uh, indispensable. Mm. If, you, if you fail, God can throw you away mm. and you surprise you, you, uh, uh, you get another person to replace so you. Nobody is indispensable. Be moving around. Mm. Awesome. Uh, Just talking about political desperation, everybody wants to be dead. Yeah. I remember one uh, one senator elect now uh, saying that in his state alone, for a position that at the end of the day only one person will go there, there are seventy eight post election cases at the tribunal <laughs> from different individuals. Because how can all of them be in, be in that position? Yeah. Because our politicians are so desperate. Yeah. Learn to know that power is transient. And then when it is your turn, things will turn around for you. God will give you that power. You don't need to become like Saul, who was desperate, who even wanted to kill David just because he wanted to stay on the throne. It's important. And then one take away from your submission, very bold, doctor, sir. When you said, if it is good for him, give to him. I just remembered something I read up about conflict. Saying that the tragic, the mistake most leaders make, you know, that's, well, that was a, a something on leadership yeah. I was reading of. He said there are two kinds of um, conflicts, personal conflict and work conflict. Okay. That the mistake most leaders make is that when they're having personal conflict with somebody, they bring it into their work. They bring it into work. Yeah. What is now due to that person for the work to move? They will not give him because they have a personal, personal issue with yeah. that person. Yeah. That a leader should live above such sentiments. Exactly. You should be exactly. able to give it to that person because that is what will make the work move. Yeah. And I think I took it away when you made that submission. As a leader, don't be partial. You don't need to give that person that contract just because he's from your kids or he's from your kindred. Is your brother, is your sister. Give it to the person that is qualified. When it is due for you to pay your workers, it's a tragedy in our country that some governors will say that, ah, why are you making all the noise in the media that I'm owing people this length of month? I'm only owing them for one month. Even if it's one month, it's something. Some people's life depends on that. Some families depend on that to stay alive. In as much as we know that God is the ultimate keeper. Conclusion. It is an abomination for kings to be wicked and not to be found to do right as leaders is a great dishonor. Let me quote that scripture again. Second Samuel chapter 23 verse 3 says, He that rules over men must be just, ruling in the fear of the Lord. Every true leader should always keep in mind that at the appropriate time, there will be appropriate and divine recompense. God will reward every man according to his work. True repentance may delay or defy God's wrath, but it is best to walk honorably and godly. Food for thought, the high and the low face God's wrath when they sin. God is not a respecter of any man. Exactly. Memory verse, Job chapter 18 verse 17. We'll read it together and then conclude. Job 18 verse 17. Are we all there? Let's read together. Job 18, verse 17. Job 18, 17. 17. The, the memory, memory of him perishes, perishes from, from the, the earth, 
and, and he, he has, has no name, name among, among the renowned. Your memory will not perish. Amen. And for that to be your lot, you have to walk in godliness as a leader. Yes. You have to walk in righteousness. You have to be godly in all that you do. We trust that today has been a great blessing to you. We thank God for this Bible study series. It's been a huge blessing to God's church and his people this year. And we continue to hope that in the days ahead, God will continue to help us. We are grateful to our resource persons today, Reverend Dr. Paul Gashinen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And may God uphold you in your labor of love in his vineyard. Amen. Reverend Dr. Sir, it's a joy to have you. Thank you. And we, Thank you. we are appreciative of the work you are doing in uh, the Ecumenical Center. God will take you a notch higher as you continue to serve him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Until next week when I'll see you again, keep on living for God. That's the essence. That's the reason we were created. God bless you. Thank you.